Hi. A while ago, I visited the Australian guru of Earthship Design, Dr. Martin Freeney, and he opened my mind to the sustainable housing alternative. Like a sailing ship or a spaceship, the Earthship has to do everything for itself in terms of its power, water and sewage. On a sailing ship, you really got to pay attention to which way the wind's coming from and that kind of thing. Same with an Earthship, you need to be thinking about the weather, how you might open and close doors and vents and things like that to get the best performance out of your Earthship. The idea is that you build them with lots of natural and recycled materials as much as possible, car tires being one of the main ones. I said, how amazing. I can't wait to buy a big wide block of north facing land to build an earthship of my own one day. But then he further blew my mind when he said this. So we did do the Goolwa earthship on a 30 meter by 30 meter suburban allotment. And I feel like that's kind of the minimum size. That's not the huge block of land that I was envisioning. That's only 900 square meters. That's suburban. So I knew I had to get my butt down to Goolwa, South Australia to meet Amy, the legend who owns this Earthship, to see how the f she pulled it off. Also, don't you dare say a word about her unfinished landscaping. She's working on it, okay? I'm watching you. Act local. Amy first found an obsession with alternative living when she spent some time living in Nicaragua. We built a school using plastic bottles and we were filling them with sand and then laying them as bricks to build the school. And I was like, that's cool, you can build out of trash? So I literally just Googled trash houses and found <laughs> Earthships. And I was like, what is this? So I went to New Mexico and I did the academy there. So mm -hmm. I stayed for a month, met Michael Reynolds, lived in Earthships, helped on um, a lot of different Earthship builds and went into the classroom to kind of learn the process behind it. And after a little bit of Googling, she stumbled across the Australian disciple himself. Marty. And looked at his website, which was great, stayed in contact, and then we just began the journey. I said, I've got a piece of land that I'm looking at down in Goa, what do you think? And then he came and made it possible. The great thing about your Earthship is one of the first really suburban Earthships, I think, surely in Australia, you can claim that. How did that discussion start with the council? Were they like, whoa, who's this crazy free spirit? I actually had a really good council experience. A lot of that, I know. That never happens, that never happens. Oh, I was so blessed, really. And a lot of that was to do with Marty. I help people get permission. Earthship Eco Homes, the company I set up to really try and drive this whole thing forward, providing people with plans and advice on how to get approval for their Earthship. And really puts everything in those initial plans that council might potentially ask. So they don't have much they need to come back on for clarification. I was really passionate. I didn't want to hide that the Earthship is made out of tyres. Mm. So you can say the Earthship is made from rubber reinforced rammed earth bricks. I was like, no, I'm proud that there's tyres. I've saved 900 tyres from landfill in this build and I'm proud that the house is built from that. So yes, leave that on the plans. They want, I want them to know that, you know, we're, we're utilising that resource. So the council were fine and were actually supportive in some regards. Really? They brought a group of other councillors from different areas past the Earthship during the construction stage to show this is one of the more interesting and unique ones that we have approved in our council zone. So we had a whole lot, maybe 25 different councillors come through and, and ask questions and, and look at the Earthship in its construction stage. It was a little hard looking for land. Like I knew I wanted a slightly sloping north facing block to build an airship and it needed to be wide enough. And in the current climate where a lot of new blocks of lands have been subdivided maybe in the wrong direction without north face being the, the long space that you can fit the earthship on, it was pretty disheartening. So when I found this one with the north face being looking onto a reserve and a wetland and in the description, because they were selling it themselves, they said a north facing block suitable for an eco home. I felt like, they're talking to me, it's me, I'm the one, me. Specifically on a suburban block, what were some of the challenges building um, your Earthship? Some of the challenges were related to the logistics of needing to have everything that you need for the build actually present on your block because you need to have space on your block for the build to happen. But I've got 900 car tyres I've collected and I needed somewhere to put them so we could have them when we needed them but also that they're not in the way you need a safe work site. For me I was really blessed that the block next door to me um, was empty and so I just contacted the owner of that block and said I've got this crazy house I'm yeah. building, I've got 40 people on site, I've got 900 car tyres, would it be okay if I just <laughs> used your land as like a holding zone? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, sure. 
is everyone that built an earth ship, so they all hippie bloody, everyone says, oh, they're off smoking doobies or the back shed. I think I'm out to dispel that myth that you need to be a, a renegade hippie to be able to like build a house like this. Yes, I feel like I connect with some hippie principles and yes, I'm all about sustainability, but also I'm happy to follow the code and I'm happy to do the right thing by council. I know in Marty's episode, he said it was like you need- Extreme quantities of enthusiasm and motivation. But that's for any house build. I mean, if you're an owner builder and you are trying to juggle building your house, getting the materials, having trades on site, also working a full-time job, it's a lot. And so often you just feel like you're going and sometimes the ball drop on the ground and you just have to pick them up. It's always a solution. I think like having that as your mindset is an important thing as part of the airship build. Why do you care about the environment? Was it a factor for you for building the airship? It definitely was a factor for me. I was passionate about trying to do or have a small footprint on the earth in that way and yes I wanted to live in a beautiful house but also I wanted to do it in a way that felt like I wasn't you know taking too much from the earth to be able to do that and I think so much of, of it was also about the ongoing costs of when you have a house and how utility bills and power and you know all of those things can really um, make your lifestyle challenging if you're having to work so hard to be able to maintain mm. and keep those bills going so thinking about if I could be sensible about that from the beginning and utilize what's available <laughs> This is kind of the heart of the house, I suppose here. Um, this back wall is the car tire wall, which has been rendered beautifully with clay. I particularly like this feature of how does the natural render meet a natural rock, meet a standard ceiling. And, and, and that kind of middle zone is also the analogy of how I found myself in the middle of this airship build. It's like, how can um, you know a conventional builder that doesn't, that always loves straight lines, meet a wall that is made out of car tires that is definitely not straight. I love that you've said that as well because new builders and like tradies and stuff love straight. Having straw bale meet car tire, that's, you know, two awesome sustainable options, but how do they work together? And so trialing that for this airship was also it works well. You know, this has cracked off that render, so I've just collected that render in a tub and I'll just mix a bit of water with it and then re put it back on. <laughs> so that's me fixing that. This is my beautiful fireplace, but actually, because the airship performs so well, I don't need to have the fire going. This is the kitchen space. Big I... kitchen. It's, you, you think earthship, smaller house. This is a big old kitchen. It is. It's been really special actually to have this kind of functioning. A big feature of this are my bench tops. This was done by a friend that I met through outdoor ed kind of industry work that I do as well. And he um, and his family rescued this bit of red gum timber from Kaipo Forest 30 years ago. It was going to be burned. And so then they slabbed it up, put it in their shed, and then he asked, Amy, would you like that as your bench top? Uh, and then this is the bathroom, which is, oh, it is kind of big, yeah, isn't it? Big. I think I didn't realise that went on the bus. <laughs> It's a fairly standard bathroom, just with like some different bottle wall features. And then there's just the spare room down here. Yeah, it's nice to have people come and visit. My dad stayed the other night. Yeah. <laughs> Again, this is the straw bale wall, car tire wall. Nice to have these little niches that yeah, we cool. cut like out with a um, yeah. chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, chainsaw, that's right. It's so <laughs> For something so beautiful and, and yeah. elegant, it's like, yeah, we chainsaw that out, mate. Well, that is true. It's like, <laughs> I love that your house doesn't have that feeling of like something's off about this house. Yeah. It just feels like a normal bloody home. And that's the great thing about it. I think it's not trying to be something that homes aren't. You're not trying to build a house out of a plane like that bloody Airbnb in Bali or anything like that. And what's the emotion when people like say, oh, this is a normal house. I didn't expect it to be like this. I actually love that because most people are like, oh, I thought you were going to live in a hobbit hole. You know? that's, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's, that's what exactly I mean. right. And so I love that I get to dispel that kind of myth hmm. that actually you can live sustainably, you can live in an earth ship but it can also feel nice, it can feel beautiful, it can feel like a regular home. So I was passionate about kind of finding that middle ground 
utilising all the Earthship principles, but also having that feel of like, oh, this is somewhere that everyone can live. I feel comfortable when I walk in. There's familiar features for me in here, but also there's some weird features of the tyres or like the straw bale walls or the earth render or the glass bottles. Like that's different and unique, but it's not so crazy that I can't get my head around no. it. Let's go to the other side of the middle ground. Yes, it looks normal, but there are a few little daily habits that you probably have to think about that are a little bit different to a normal house. What are some of those? Yeah, so I always need to think about how I'm sailing the earth ship. What's the temperature outside? Do I need to open or close the cooling tubes um, to bring more air in or to stop the cold air in? Do I need to open and close the awnings at the um, greenhouse to let the airflow come in and out? Uh, I need to make sure that I'm using all of um, eco and kind of organic products for in the bathroom and yeah. in the kitchen so that when it goes through this beautiful uh, garden bed or then goes into the septic tank that that's all being processed fine. Final question. Thank you so much for bringing us through. Do you remember Amy's Earthship song? Come to Amy's. She does. <laughs> cool. She does. That's Have you seen that? Yeah. Oh, if you think about our planet, if your ideas could plant seeds, would you commit to time and energy to the future that we need? If you think sustainability is something you desire, would you like to gain some muscles? Have you considered pounding tires? If you like things that are healthy, if you like things that are fun, do you want to come down and join us in this South Australian sun? And it's just more than a building, it's a home, a community. We join us and work as one provision. This has gotten you keen to start your own Earthship journey. Make sure you sign up for a workshop. I know I'm keen as hell to give it a crack. And of course, if you know another legend doing cool shit to protect the natural world, comment their name down below. Love ya.